Hello and welcome to Aging Well. My name is Nathan Lamb. I'm Director of Community Relations and Outreach for Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Uh, with me today is our awesome guest, Erica Farrell, the Associate Director of the Aging Information Center at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Great to have you here. Thanks, Nathan. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Uh, Aging Well really focuses on issues and concerns that um, are of interest to older adults and, and people with disabilities. So I think it's really awesome that you're on the show today because the Aging Information Center is such a great way for people to access the many services um, and sources of information we have at the agency. So I'm really thrilled you're here to have this discussion with me. Um, so I guess to start, for those who aren't familiar, can you tell me a little bit about what the Aging Information Center is? Sure. Um, so how I like to think about the Aging Information Center is it really has two primary functions. Uh, the first function is called Information Referral, or INR. Um, and the second function is that there are several programs that we have social workers work with people in the field. Um, and so the INR piece is, is very much, you know, accessing resources, talking with people on the phone about resources. Um, and then the referral piece is a little different, or the um, program piece is a little different, where they're working directly with people. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to discussing both with you. Can we start with the info and referral aspect first? Um, tell me a little bit about how that goes when people are receiving these information and referral systems uh, sis, uh, services. Sure, so um, we do get a lot of callers from the community, um, either older adults or you know, persons with disabilities who are younger, um, caregivers, professionals. They all call up um, either with questions about resources that we can give them information about and give them phone numbers or websites to go to. Um, and we can also give them information about different um, programs that we have at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. And sometimes that does result in a referral to one of those programs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the INR, um, the INR piece of the work we do is very much, um, you know, we want to provide people with the information that they need um, and the resources that they're looking for. We're very committed to that. So it's a free resource. It's free. Anyone in the community can call. That's right. Um, and one of the things I really like about this program from having seen it from afar is that people who call don't really need to know which program they need. It's more, I could use some help in this area, I could use some information in this area. Is that pretty much? Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, sometimes people do call knowing exactly what they're looking for. They might say, I need home care services, or I'm interested in, a, in the adult family care program. But a lot of people call up and they say, you know, I think I need some help, or I think mom or dad might need some help. And, um, you know, from there we do have really well-trained information referral specialists who then assess people. You know, they'll ask questions in order to uh, provide people with information that seems like will be of most use for them and, and give them options. That's the whole, the whole point. So we're not necessarily recommending something directly. We're giving people options and information so that they can then make their own decision about what might work best for them. Kind of a one-stop shop for yeah. when you need information. Yeah. Now, you mentioned two different types of referrals. There's basically the ones where you can identify somebody who's a fit for one of our programs at the agency. And we have a lot of programs that help people remain independent, healthy in their homes. And then there's also external referrals. Can you give me an example of some of the external referrals uh, that you might yeah. um, come across? Yeah, so we definitely have, you know, a lot of services at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services um, that, that people might opt into, but, you know, we aren't experts in everything. And so I think um, we refer externally to legal services a lot, um, sometimes transportation services. If somebody doesn't need, you know, home care service, transportation can be a part of that. But if they aren't looking for other services, they just want to ride to the grocery store and do their own shopping, we might refer, refer to one of the community resources like Door to Door. Um, you know, so those are some big ones. Um, you know, housing is another, you know, we might get callers calling about housing. Unfortunately, we're not housing experts, you know, so we might refer to another, another resource that um, we think will be most useful for, for people to access and get the information that they want. And, and the primary topics that people call up to ask about, what are, what are some of those? Yeah, so I think um, primarily a lot of people do call about help in the home, um, which sometimes, like I said, might result in a home care referral. Um, they might be calling, it might be a caregiver calling about one of the programs that they can get paid, like a paid stipend for caring for somebody that, you know, a grandfather, grandf uh, grandmother mm -hmm. um, in the home. So that might be an AFC um, referral. 
So lots of uh, questions about how to get help in the home. Um, we get a lot of questions about you know, transportation resources. Um, another really big one is health insurance. People, you know, turning 65, new to Medicare, um, public benefits, mass health, you know, and how those um, how those interact and and you know can provide coverage for somebody who's you know aging. And if somebody is getting ready to apply for mass health, is that something where you can refer them to guidance or help with those things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we do assist people quite a bit with with mass health applications. Um, you know, depending on the level of need that they might have, um, we also refer out for that type of assistance. Uh, and depending on, you know, whether we think that they're capable of then accessing the help that they need, it is a huge a huge need in in the community. Or, or what we've what we've noticed is that that's something people are calling up about a lot. Um, but you know, we do have people who can guide guide people over the phone, answer questions about those applications. Um, they can also meet one-on-one -on -one if they have more in-depth questions. And sometimes that also might result in an, um, you know, a referral to legal services if, if people do have you know, homes or assets. Um, that's something to consider when applying for MassHealth. Absolutely. Um, in terms of when people are going to call the Information Center, mm -hmm. they think they might get referred to a program. Does this take a fair amount of time? About what? Sh how, how much of a time investment are we looking at here? Is this five minutes and done, or fifteen minutes? You probably should have the driver's license <laughs> and the tax documents there. Or what's the uh, right. what's that look like usually? Sure, I would say for most of our programs, um, they don't really need to have any of those important documents out in front of them. Um, the time that it takes probably depends on how much information that they're looking for um, and, and the assessment of the INR specialist, so how many questions that they're asking um, before you know, they opt into a program. So they might be talking with someone for 10 or 15 minutes about the different options, and then at that point the person might say, you know, I am interested in the AFC program. And at that point the INR specialist would then um, you know, pull out our referral form and then go through you know, a, a pretty set set of questions that, that shouldn't take too long. And it's basic information they're going to want to have. Um, date of birth of the person being referred, you know, their address, um, obviously name is important. And we do ask a number of other questions that are helpful to have at the point of referral but aren't always necessary. Um, but the INR specialist will always let someone know that you know, if they don't have some, some piece of information that it's all right or whether they absolutely needed to make the referral. You know, you used a word several times that I really liked, which was options. Mm -hmm. This whole philosophy that we have at the agency about giving people information, letting them know what options are available to them, and then helping support whatever decisions uh, they make. And it sounds like the approach that you guys have there at the Aging Information Center is all about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what's really important for people to know too is that you know we might refer people to different resources, and if you know one of those resources turns out to not be a good fit, um, doesn't meet their needs, we absolutely would want people to call back and let us know that you know they're actually still looking for something, and and we'll do our best to to try to find something else that fits for them. Um, you know, that, I think that that's you know that's really important for you know. Us as, as INR specialists, we want to make sure that people are accessing and have um, and are connected with with the places or resources that they need to be connected with. You're there to help. Yeah, <laughs> that's really excellent. Well, I think that's all for our first segment. Uh, so I guess we'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb from Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. With me today is Erica Farrell, director of our Age Information Center. Hello again. Hi. So we were talking about the Aging Information Center in the first segment. And I was hoping we could circle back and talk a little bit more about why people call some of the specific issues and challenges that people uh, come to you guys with, because you're this great free community resource. I'm just sort of curious on what the most common topics you hear from people. Yeah, sure. So um, I do think I mentioned this, but um, calling about in-home help is, is one of the really big call topics that we get. Um, people are looking for information about um, homemaking, like you know, having people do chores around the house, um, as well as personal care. Those tend to be two um, really big topics that people call about or end up, um, you know, end up talking with an INR specialist about. Um, other topics include health insurance. Um, I also talked about MassHealth, but Medicare. Um, 
that Medicare is a pretty complex system, um, and oftentimes, you know, people transitioning from, you know, an, an employment, uh, an employer pro, um, health insurance program to Medicare, you know, they have a lot of questions about, well, this was covered before, and, and now what will be covered, or what am I going to owe? You know, and we do have, you know, people who can talk with. Um, talk expertly about those things. So we get people calling about health insurance. We also get people calling about transportation. Um, as, as people age, you know, some do stop driving um, and, and how to get to and from um, to medical appointments, uh, to the grocery store, um, to the hairdresser, all these become big questions for people. So transportation is also another big, big thing people call about. Absolutely. About how many calls each year do you guys field? So for the last fiscal year, which ended on June 30th, um, there were a little over 5,400. And that averages about um, between 400 and 550 calls a month. And are these mostly people, if you have the data, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to spring a pop quiz on you. Are these mostly people who are already clients and they're calling with new concerns? Or are these people who are new to us and really coming to us with new questions? Yeah, I would say there's actually a good mix. I don't have any firm numbers on that. Um, you know, some people, also we get people who may have or previously been involved with one of our programs, so know of us, but maybe haven't been involved with us for several years. We get people calling who are turning, you know, 60, 65. We get those calls pretty fre frequently um, and who may not have known about elder services before. Um, we also get professionals calling. Um, it's a good mix, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to give you any firm numbers that I don't have. <laughs> Absolutely. So we've definitely talked about the information and referral services. Um, and this was something that I actually learned in researching the show, that you have a bunch of other interesting programs that you run out of um, Age Info. And I was kind of hoping we might be able to talk about those a little bit. Yeah. So we, um, we have several programs in the department. Um, I'll just kind of list through them kind of broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, family, there's a family caregiver support program. Um, which seems pretty self-explanatory, but people who are caring for um, older adults or persons with disabilities, um, we have social workers who will work with them directly. Uh, we have a long-term care options counseling program, which is very consumer-driven. Um, we're wanting to make sure that, you know, this is another program for people who are under, you know, 60 or under 65. Um, we want to make sure that they um, know what their options are if, if they have some kind of disability or condition um, that may deteriorate as they get older. Uh, we want to make sure that they know, you know, nursing homes that are available or assisted living options, um, in-home help, you know, about that. And so there's that program. Um, we also have the SHINE program, which, which stands for Serving the Health Insurance Needs of Everyone on Medicare. Um, and that's primarily the health insurance counseling that I've referenced before. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's kind of a catch-all program called Elder Care Advice. Um, and really, we help people with a variety of things um, in that program. So we have, um, you know, some people are clinical social workers um, and some people aren't. But everybody is trained on those programs as well. And they also cover the INR um, calls. And it, I think that's really informative for both um, everyone involved, really. It sounds like there's kind of a good mix of information and guidance. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's um, and that's, that's good because one without the other, it's kind of like when you have both, you have the whole picture because you guys really are the experts. And when you mentioned that final program, the one about giving advice, um, what was that? Elder care, Elder care advice. advice, yes. Is that sort of under that um, umbrella? Is that sort of what that program does or is it something different? It's supposed to, you know, it's also another way to, to work with somebody um, more individually and one-on-one. -on -one. So it takes INR a step further. Um, you know, we can offer people, you know, in the Somerville and Cambridge area, we can offer them a home visit. We can offer them an office visit or somewhere else in the community. We can meet them, you know, almost anywhere. Or we could just talk with them multiple times over the phone. Um, and so it's, it takes it a little bit, you know, beyond the INR, you know, which might just be a one-off, you know, a call that someone might have with a specialist. Mm -hmm. um, these programs, um, you know, an INR specialist might identify that someone could benefit. They'd assess them for these programs. They'd give them the option, and then they can work directly with one of our social workers one on one, um, just in a more thorough way if if they need that assistance. That's great. Um, and the service area and duration and setting. So yeah. most of these are for Somerville and Cambridge. Yeah, there'd be few exceptions. Um, someone, either the caregiver or our care recipient, would have to be in the Somerville and Cambridge area for that program. But otherwise, it's the Somerville, Cambridge area that we serve. All right. Um, and the idea of giving support for caregivers, what, what sort of questions do caregivers call the Age Information Center with? Yeah. Um, 
So this is also, you know, people do call um, about different things, but I'd say a call that we do get reasonably frequently is, um, you know, maybe there's a caregiver who has been caring for, you know, a husband or spouse um, uh, for some time, and maybe they have some form of dementia and it's all been okay, um, they've managed it so far, and then um, the progression of the disease suddenly they're seeing new new behaviors that they don't know how to manage um, as a caregiver. And so we get that call a lot, like, you know, somebody might be calling and saying, you know, um, so-and-so has started wandering and I'm not sure how to, how to handle this and make sure that this person is safe um, or that maybe they've started yelling or being repetitive, um, which is something that you'll see with Alzheimer's or dementia sometimes. Um, and so that's what caregivers might call about and in which case we might describe the caregiver program and, and explain how, how that program might be useful working with a social worker one-on-one. Um, -on -one. We might also give them other resources that they could access, um, you know, Alzheimer's Association, obviously, if it's um, an Alzheimer's or related dementia or, you know, some other community resource that they might want to access as a caregiver. It's such a great resource. It's like you, you basically have access to all the things that we have and then you're knowledgeable about sort of the whole um, landscape of, of external services. Um, I can tell you in doing the outreach for the agency, one of the things that we've settled on as a point where if like people remember one thing from our presentation, it's basically if you have questions about aging, call the Aging Information Center. Um, and basically they can take you from there and it definitely, I'm getting that sense in talking with you, that's how it plays out along all these different avenues. One last question on this um, area. Common Medicare cases. I'm just sort of curious, some of the questions that people call up with there, what sort of scenarios are you looking at um, in those instances? Yeah, um, we definitely get, I think I mentioned this, but uh, you know, people who are turning 65 and are eligible mm -hmm. um, and just have questions about what it is and, and what their options are, because there are a variety of options. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we also get people who are calling about their Medicare Part D, which is the drug plan um, mm -hmm. coverage. Um, you know, sometimes people, uh, you know, have several medications and they have to choose between so many different plans and they need some guidance in terms of, well, what's going to be the best fit for me in my situation. So we get people calling about that coverage um, a lot. Um, and then, you know, gen more general questions about how that might interact with, you know, something like mass health or, or public benefits and savings programs, which, you know, both Medicare and mass health do have. Um, so ways that they can save on, you know, prescription drug costs or the Part B premium, um, you know, we, we provide information about that. Absolutely. Cost would definitely seem to be a factor when dealing with, uh, I think anyone who's dealt with the medical system at all is definitely familiar with that aspect. And you can yeah. provide some guidance on how to proceed, see if there's any options, if Absolutely. people are facing pressures with costs. Yes, yes. Oh, that's excellent. Um, any final thoughts you would like to add on the Aging Information Center that I might have neglected to bring up? No, I mean, I think, uh, I think you kind of hit it on the nose by saying that, you know, if you have any kind of question about aging or if you're a younger person, you know, with a disability and have some kind of question, we are, we are the resource for you. Um, and we definitely want to make sure that you are um, accessing the resources that you need to, whether that's through us or through, uh, you know, another, another agency. Erica Farrell, you've been a fabulous guest. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Before we close out the show today, I'd like to take a couple of moments to tell you about an important issue that Somerville Cambridge Elder Services is working to raise awareness about. Stroke is the number one leading cause of disability amongst older adults, and it's the third leading cause of death um, in the United States amongst older adults. And one of the tragic aspects of this is that it is preventable if people receive prompt medical attention. To help raise awareness about this issue, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services is distributing information uh, to raise stroke awareness this September. Uh, one of the aspects of that program is a PSA that we have received from the State Department of Health, which we would like to share with you right now. to sway Grandma sounded strange when she spoke and Jenny had to ask What if my grandma's having a stroke I think I better act fast I think I better act fast Does her face look a little bit uneven Does one arm drift 
down Is a speech coming out kind of strangely Then it's time, time to call 911 Jack and his favorite friends Were having lunch in town When Hank looked up, half his face drooped down wasn't making a joke and so Jack had to ask what if my buddy is having a stroke I think I better act fast I think I better act fast does his face look a little bit uneven does one arm drift down is his speech coming out kind of strangely then it's time time of day Helen turned to Bob and said my arm is not okay my arm was limp inside her coat and so Bob had to ask what if Helen is having a stroke I think I better act fast I think I better act fast does her face look a little bit uneven does one arm drift down is her speech coming out Every minute after that, more brain cells die. Our heroes acted quickly, and so they all have hope. Precious time and emergency care. You can be the stroke. You can be the stroke. Call fast for any sign of stroke. It's what you gotta do. back again. I'd like to close out this episode of Aging Well by thanking my guests today, Erica Farrell. Thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about the Aging Information Center. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I'd also like to thank Colleen Morrissey for all of the research and writing work behind the scenes that she did to make this program uh, complete, and also Margarita Mendoza for the work that she does putting together the graphics. Uh, that's all we have for this month. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in October. We'll have more Aging Well then. Thanks again.